In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Instagram to promote your business. Whether your goal is to generate more leads, more clients, more customers, or more sales, Instagram is a powerful social media network that, when used strategically, can help you grow your business. The key word there, of course, is strategically, because in today's competitive business environment, you can't just toss up a bunch of funny cat memes and expect the sales to come rolling in. Unless, of course, you sell cat stuff in which case that's actually a really good strategy. So with all that said, if you're looking for a proven strategy to grow your business on Instagram, this video is for you. So let's get to it. Instagram is more powerful today than it's ever been before. With over a billion monthly active users, the ability to reach a huge variety of different age ranges and demographics, and a pretty even split between both males and females, well, the odds are good that your ideal customers, those perfect clients that you wanna work with, well, they're active and present on Instagram. But you probably already know that. That's why you're here. But what you may not have known is that not only is Instagram widely used, but it's also widely used to make buying and purchasing decisions by your potential customers. And savvy entrepreneurs and business owners know this. This is why more and more business owners and entrepreneurs and creatives are swarming and flocking and herding, all kinds of animal terms. And that's why more and more business owners are taking Instagram a whole lot more seriously in order to generate new leads, new clients, new customers, and new sales, and essentially essentially to grow their business. So let's take a look at a few of the most effective strategies that are working on Instagram right now so you can do the same. First off, it's important to understand just how powerful and how powerfully addictive this platform really is. 63% of all Instagram users check the app at least once a day and 42% check it multiple times a day. Sometimes multiple, multiple, multiple times a day. Basically, your customers and your clients, they're active and they're present and they're engaged on Instagram and they're hungry for more content. So it only makes sense to give the people what they want. What this means for you is that you as a business owner or as an entrepreneur, well, you need to be posting probably more often than you're currently posting. Most brands, most businesses tend to post on average around one to two times a day. So if you're not currently doing that, you probably need to up your game. Now, fortunately, there is more than one way to post. Of course, you have what everybody knows, which is the Instagram feed, but you also have stories and now you also have reels. So let's take a look at those. One of the biggest ways that business owners and entrepreneurs get confused when it comes to Instagram is essentially with all of the different options you have for creating and posting content. You used to have essentially the feed and then they added stories and now they've added reels. There's also IGTV and who knows what else is gonna be coming later down the pipeline. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about IG Live. The point of the matter is there's a whole lot of stuff you can do. So where do you even start? Well, essentially what I'd like to suggest here is that you start with your feed first. Essentially your feed is what most people know of when they think of Instagram. It's that perfectly curated content wall of beautiful pictures and images and things like that. Next up, you have stories. Stories are an amazing feature to use for kind of raw and authentic and off the cuff or behind the scenes type of content. You can create these on the fly as you go through your day and they don't need to be as perfect or as nice as your feed. And then of course you have real and reels are a great way to have a little bit of fun, but they are a little bit more technical to use and have a much steeper learning curve. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second. The way that I like to think about it, the way I'd like to suggest to you is that consider your feed for real good, consider your stories for real life, and consider your reels for real fun, or real fun. Hmm play around with some words there. What this means for you is that you wanna be strategic and plan ahead for all of your feed content. And then for your stories, well, just make sure to keep your phone with you and post throughout the day. And then for your reels, well, it's a little bit trickier. So we'll talk about that next. All right, so Instagram reels. Here's the deal on reels. Sounds like a game show. Here's the deal on reels. First off, feed posts, the regular type of content you think of when you think of Instagram, well, these are kind of mandatory. After all, that's sort of what the whole platform's built on. Next up, you have stories. Stories are a whole lot easier, a whole lot essentially less professional and a lot more on the fly. We'll give you some tips on that in just a second too, but also mandatory. But reels, Reels are a little bit different. Essentially, reels are short and mini clips, uh, fun clips that Instagram introduced as a way to compete with TikTok. Reels come with some great big pros and some great big cons, both of which basically encompass the same thing in that they're giving you a ton of creative freedom on editing styles and on filters and effects and on fonts and on music and all sorts of things that go into it. If you're a creative individual who loves creating this type of stuff, this is amazing. 
But if you're a business owner or an entrepreneur who's wearing a lot of different hats, putting out a ton of different fires and essentially managing a whole lot of different work, this is overwhelming. This is why the best advice I can offer when it comes to Instagram Reels is to do a little bit of due diligence, a little bit of research, look into your competitors and your colleagues and see what others are doing in your space so you can get ideas and essentially inspiration and model from them if and when you decide to create Instagram Reels of your very own. So what does this mean for you? Well, start with regularly posting to your Instagram feed. Then of course, add Instagram stories. And then once that is completely dialed in, you can take a look at Instagram Reels. All right, now that we've got that covered, let's move on to something a little easier, Instagram Stories. Instagram Stories are a bit of a business secret weapon in that they're fast, they're fun, and they're incredibly engaging. Also, if you're running paid Instagram ads, which we're gonna talk about in just a second, well, Instagram Stories are a phenomenal place to place those ads because again, they're fun and they're easy and they're engaging. Plus, Instagram story ads are one of the most cost-effective forms of online advertising available to you today. Anyway, when it comes to running regular Instagram stories, not paid, but organic, just stuff that you post and as you go through your day, well, the key there is to be raw, to be real, to be authentic, and to share a behind the scenes perspective. Maybe ideas, maybe insights, maybe actual stories from your everyday life. Plus, make sure to take advantage of all the tools that Instagram gives you when it comes to creating more engaging stories. Things like stickers and polls and questions and all of the things that get people to interact with your content and keep them coming back for more. What this means for you is that you want to keep your phone handy throughout the day. Try to think of opportunities to create stories, to create captions, to create stickers, to create polls, to ask questions, and really to engage with your audience. All right, the next strategy when it comes to promoting your business with Instagram is to leverage the power of video. Essentially, a whole lot more video. Probably unsurprisingly, videos and posts with videos get around 38% more engagement than just your standard image or picture posts. This is easy to understand. People love video, and we're seeing a proliferation of video across not only Instagram and how they're prioritizing it and favoring it, but across all sorts of different social media networks as well. Essentially, video is powerful, and it's not going away anytime soon. Not only that, but for you as the business owner, or as an entrepreneur, well, video gives you a ton of persuasive abilities and influential powers, and the ability to communicate that much more information in that much less of time. Now it's kind of confusing. Basically, video lets you say a whole lot more with a whole lot less. If a picture's worth a thousand words, then a video's worth a million. Maybe even more if you talk really fast. What this means for you is you need to post more videos. You can post more polished videos to your feed, you can post more authentic and kind of raw videos to your stories, and you can post those fun little clips to your Instagram Reels. Again, if you choose to use Instagram Reels. All right, the next thing you need to know about Instagram is that hashtags are still just as relevant today as they've ever been before maybe even more so. The importance of hashtags really can't be overstated here. Essentially, all a hashtag really is, is a keyword, something that's relevant to your market or your business or your industry. And it allows you to be discovered and found when somebody's typing in a relevant hashtag, relevant keyword. Now, how many hashtags you wanna use in your posts and in your stories is something that's always up for debate with different statistics sort of spouting out different numbers. 11 was the magic number for a period of time, but more recent stats are showing that pretty much more is better. Basically use as many hashtags as you're allowed to use. Over the years, I've gone back and forth from using one or two or three carefully selected hashtags to basically filling up as many as I could. And today, I tend to fall more into the camp of using as many as you can. Yeah, it looks a little bit crowded, a little bit cluttered, but it gives you more opportunity to be discovered and to be found. And nobody can do business with you if they don't know you exist. So what this means for you is you're going to want to do a little bit of research into your market and into your business and into your industry and see what hashtags others are using. And more importantly, what hashtags your customers and your clients and your potential prospects are using to find content that you would want to rank for or you would want to be found for. Then, unsurprisingly, make a list of these hashtags and make sure to include a variety of them in each of your upcoming posts. All right, this next point is incredibly important, but it should also be pretty obvious, so I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. And that's essentially that you need to be present, ideally active and engaged, but at the very least, present on Instagram. And the reason that you do need to be present, ideally active and engaged on Instagram, is because 70% of people do look up brands, do do research, and do try to find you on Instagram. And if you're not there, well, 
nothing good's gonna happen. They'll either give up and just move on, or they'll find a competitor and go there instead. What this means for you is you do want to make sure that you're prioritizing Instagram as a platform, and really making sure that you're set up, you've optimized your bio, you've got a few posts on the page, and ideally you've created some kind of consistent content calendar that you can stick to, that won't overwhelm you, but will still allow you to post regularly to your page. All right, let's move on to the next point. And this is something that I essentially wanna give you permission to do, and that is to use Instagram to sell your business, to sell more of your products, to sell more of your services, essentially to help other people with the value that you provide. A lot of business owners and a lot of entrepreneurs are scared and fearful of essentially putting themselves out there and promoting on Instagram. But this is a mistake. The reality is, is that one in three Instagram users have made a purchase through the platform. Essentially, people are buying and they're buying on Instagram so they might as well be buying your stuff. What this means for you is to really not be afraid to make the odd promotional post. Now here's how I like to do it so it doesn't come off as too spammy or too sleazy or too salesy. Essentially, keep your feed nice and clean and ideally promotion free. But then don't be afraid to put your promotions through your stories because they're only gonna last for 24 hours, but also through the use of paid ads because then, well, essentially you can put them up and you can take them down however you see fit. All right, next, let's talk about location because location is an incredibly important and valuable part no matter what kind of business you are. The statistics show that posts that show a location get around 79% more engagement. So if you have the option to, you definitely wanna add your location. Now, if you're a local business, Business, this is obviously a no-brainer. You should be adding your location every single time that you make a post or you upload something or anything like that because people can find you and then they can do business with you. If you're a national business or an international business or an online business, this is a little bit of a different story, especially if say you work from home because you probably don't want to be posting your home address every single time you post. That said, if you do any kind of traveling at all or if you ever go to fancy places or even not fancy places, it still gives you an opportunity to mark that location so that you can tap into other audiences wherever you may be. What this means for you is that if you have a local business, obviously you want to include the location all the time. And if you have a national or international or online business, well, be selective about including the location and really have to make the decision on whether it's right for you, depending on your privacy and security concerns, of which those are very real. But still, don't be afraid when you're traveling or out of town to mark the location to boost that engagement. All right, let's talk about Instagram ads. Because while we did touch on this briefly before, it's incredibly important to dive in because when used properly, Instagram ads are one of the most cost-effective forms of online advertising available to you today as a business owner or entrepreneur. Now, Instagram ads are run through the Facebook ads manager. So you're going to need a Facebook ads account in order to run Instagram ads because Facebook owns Instagram. Then once you're in the Facebook ads manager, all you have to do is select placements and choose Instagram, whether feed or story or both. Now, obviously, set Setting up a full-scale advertising campaign is beyond the scope of this video, but let me give you a few tips to help guide you in the right direction. First off, videos typically get around three times more comments and more engagement than image or picture posts. However, this does vary widely depending on the niche or the market or the industry you're in. So yes, definitely create video ads, but also create a few image ads as well to test against them. Next, you want to create different ads, essentially different formats of the same ad for your feed and for your stories because because, well, they are different formats and they're going to look incredibly different. So you can't just take the same ad and then crop it and splice it and smash it all together and expect it to perform equally well on different places. Plus, almost without fail, you're going to have one of these two placements outperform the other by a massive margin, whether feed or stories. Now, I don't know which one that's going to be for you, which is why you definitely want to split them out and test them separately so you can find the winner and then cut the loser. And lastly, on the topic of ads, it's really important to approach your online advertising under understanding that ads are by no means a get-rich-quick scheme. Running a successful and profitable advertising campaign is going to take a significant investment of time, of money, and of energy, and all sorts of different resources. So make sure that you have the budget and the desire in order to really sort of leverage this tool in your business. That said, if you're going all in on Instagram, it only makes sense to spend a bit of time to learn the ad platform, because when done properly, it can be incredibly profitable. At this point, we've covered some good strategies on how to use Instagram to promote your business. But if you're looking for even more strategies, you're going to want to check out the video I have linked up right here on Instagram marketing for small business. So make sure to check that out now and I'll see you in the episode. Tip number two is to make sure to have a brand plan. The three words that can help you build an effective brand plan are consistency, clarity, 
and congruence. Consistency means that you're applying a regular schedule, meaning 